tens of thousands of years ago, ancestral humans began domesticating wolves to become modern dogs. And in recent centuries, there has been a plethora of new dog breeds which have been developed. We consider all of these to be one single species because they can all interbreed and hybridize to produce fertile offspring. In fact, dogs can still interbreed with wolves, their ancestral species, but because they are separate, one wild, one domestic, we consider them as separate species. Despite being a single species, there are very significant differences between some breeds of dog in their size, the shape of their bodies, the length of their legs, the projection of their lower jaws, etc. So for example, while the smallest dogs have stood less than four inches tall, some have stood three and a half feet tall. While the smallest dogs have measured, say, six inches long, uh, the largest dogs have measured more than eight feet long. The smallest dogs may be about a pound, while the largest dogs can be almost 350 pounds. So there is an enormous diversity in dogs. Obviously size is not the only difference. If you were to compare, say, the legs of a greyhound or those of a dachshund, you can see just the, the great difference in body proportions. Or when you consider the shape of the face, from elongated snouts in some breeds like greyhounds to very thick snouts in some uh, breeds like uh, St. Bernard's and Great Danes. Or very short faces in chihuahuas and pugs. Or a projecting lower jaw in bulldogs. There is a great diversity in the bone structure of modern breeds of dogs. Biologically speaking, a species is defined as a group of populations which can interbreed under natural conditions. Now, should the natural conditions of dogs change, what we now recognize as one species might potentially be multiple species. Let's say, for example, that the different dog breeds were isolated in different regions of the world and humans did not transport them throughout the continents. Then, under these circumstances, instead of being one big species, there might be several recognized species because they would be reproductively isolated from the different breeds of dog. Dogs have been around for tens of thousands of years, but if different dog breeds had only existed in specific time periods, then they would not have been able to reproduce together. And under such a scenario, one dog breed being developed you know, thousands of years ago, another dog breed uh, being developed hundreds of years ago, then these would not have been able to reproduce together and might conceivably be recognized as separate species of dog. Only because they cohabit today are they capable of interbreeding and thus recognized as one single species. There are other possible scenarios in which populations of dogs might be reproductively isolated from uh, each other. Imagine, for uh, example, that one only mated in spring while one only mated in fall. They would never interbreed. Imagine if there are chromosomal changes which accumulate so that when they try to interbreed, their offspring uh, don't uh, thrive or perhaps would never even be born. Or imagine that they in, live in different habitats, one perhaps living in mountains, another in swamps. Or the females of one breed only like the body shape or coloration or bark of the males of her breed. Under these circumstances, they could be different species, reproductively isolated from each other.